Hi, welcome to Informatica Power Center. So, uh, in the real time, we are having the project architecture with the different phases and also involved in ETL project development life cycle. So, how the different phases are involved in a ETL development project uh, we see here and what are the phases we are having and which phase, which uh, scenario means which uh, words we are using in the real time world we have to know before going for interview. Okay, we will discuss one by one here. First, if we, if we want to do any project, we need a phase one in that we, we is called as requirement gathering, a business requirement collection. So, and also called as business requirement document. So a BRD, nothing but business requirement document. The business requirement gathering start by whom it, 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 it will start by business analyst, on-site technical lead and client business users. They are get together, come one place and they do the business requirement gathering to start a project. In this phase, a business analyst prepares business requirement document or business requirement specification. So here a business analyst prepare BRD or it is called as BRS. Okay. The business requirement collection takes place at client location. The output from business requirement analysis are business requirement specification, BRS, business requirement specification that is called as BRS as well as SRS means system requirement specifications. These are the requirement gathering and also we are having system requirement collections here. What are the means? SRD. So senior technical people or ETL architect will prepare the system requirement specification which contains software and hardware details of the system system requirement specification will includes that are OS to be used that we are using in this project Windows or Unix or Linux. So we have to write that OS as well as RDBMS required RDBM is nothing but relational database management system required to build a database. So which RDBMS we are using? We are using Oracle, Teradata, My, MySQL, DB2 or anything. Here ETL tools required Informatica, Data Stage. So like that we are having ETL tools, IBM. So everything we are having. So the here we are using OLAP tools required are Cognos, BO. These are the OLAP tools we are required for our software requirement collection, means software requirement document. So, which specifies in this project which we are using and which components we are using that can be documented in this so software requirement document. The SRS is also called as technical requirement specification. SRS means software requirement specification is also called as technical requirement specification. Okay. These words we have to keep in mind. SRS, TRS, Cognos and ETL tools and SRD. These words we have to keep in mind and go through this video once or twice you will get memorized that terms. So in the design phase, the second level is design phase. We have to pre prepare here HLD, LLD -L -L and DFD here. So we see one by one what is HLD, what is LLD. High level design document, HLD is nothing but high level design document which prepares by an ETL architect. So and data warehouse architect participate in designing a solution to build a data warehouse and high level document is prepared based on business requirement. So in the business requirement, what kind of things we have to 
uh, keep that can be prepared by ETL architect as well as data warehouse architect and they are participate in designing a build a data warehouse. Here data warehouse is OLAP. Here the low level design document means LLD based on HLD a senior ETL developer prepare low level design document. Here the senior ETL developer, developer prepare low level design document. The low level design document contains more technical details of ETL system means mappings, what is source and what is target and what logic we are using in this connection that can be de derived in LLD. So that can be the LLD is prepared by whom? It is prepared by ETL developer and LLD contains data flow diagrams means DFD. Here details of source and targets of each mapping and LLD also contains information about full load and increment load. So the full load and what is incremental load we seen already in the project architecture video. And again, I'm telling the full load is staging load means whenever we are getting the different, different data from OLTP system. So we have to store in ODS. So from that ODS, we are to load full load into our uh, staging area. The staging area is a truncate load, uh, the truncate table option we have to enable there. This is called as landing zone. And also this full load we can, uh, uh, we can do at the different, different servers locations. The replica of the uh, replica of a one server we do another location that can be full load, full load. And incremental load is nothing but which will be the data the data is coming daily so the data is coming daily and also the data is fetched day by day means some uh, average these kind of things can be done through the incremental load so after low level document then development phase will start development phase so in the development phase we are having mapping design so based on lld and etl team will create a mapping that is ETL code. After designing the mappings, the code mapping will be reviewed by developers. Here, the after designing the mapping, who will be reviewed? It will be reviewed by the developers, the code review. So how the code review will done in the development phase, we see here. Here, code review will be done by a developer. In code review, the developer will review the code and the logic but not the data here what the developer will do so here the developer will do only the uh, logic of the program how it is going and how the pipeline is there and which which transformation we are using and the what data we are getting as a sample he see but not all the data he will see will whether the whether the rows are going or uh, target or not that can see in the session log so this can be done through the code review. The, the following activities takes place in code review. That is, you have to check the naming standards of transformation, uh, mapping of data, etc. Source and target mapping, place of the correct logic or not in the mapping. This can be done through the code review. Means naming standards is nothing but if we are uh, using mapping, we, when we do M underscore or not. So when we are going for the workflow, we did WF underscore like that. The naming conventions is important. If suppose whatever the logic transformation we are doing, we have to give a proper name for that. If not, we are unable to, we are unable to find which transformation is for which code we are unable to find. That's why whenever we are creating a mapping, we have to uh, memorize for twice and thrice and we have to give a appropriate name that is called as naming standards. So next is in the development phase, we are having mapping design. So code review as well as peer review. What is peer review? Which is a code review will be done by a developer. Next is testing. So in the testing, we have unit testing, a unit test 
for data warehouse is a white box testing it should check the etl procedure and mappings the following are the test cases can be executed by an etl, ETL developer here in the testing uh, the etl developer will do this kind of things that is verify data loss so whether the data is coming uh, correctly or not so the source row count as well as target row count as matching or not and also uh, here we see any rejector rows are there we have to find in the session log second thing number of records in the source and target so the number of records is matching or not we see next data load or insert the insertion is going correct or not also seeing data load and update the updation property update the data is updating properly or not we check here and incremental load so in just now discussed incremental load the incremental load is nothing but we uh, it is a daily process to load to a uh, for target and also by using that we have to find average sum etc if suppose we are having an icici bank that icici bank transactions done daily 10 million 10 million uh, some lakhs we see uh, 10 million uh, lakhs we see here if it, this is daily processing the average becomes 10 million some days it becomes 8 million 9 million also as, as an average we are getting in the report 10 million only here data accuracy so how the data is uh, tra transforming from source to target with the accuracy or any data loss is there we will they will test in the testing verify naming standards if the naming standards are perfect or not also in the the, the testing team will do testing verify column mapping the pipelines are of the column is properly mapped or not if suppose they are having employee number in the place of employee number if we get the department number so it will etl mapping will done successfully executed but the data whatever the data we are uh, uh, assigning for a column that will be mismatched so so it becomes a logical error there so how the the data flow numbers will differ so and this kind of things are verified in the verify column mapping the unit test will be carried by etl developer in development phase etl developer has to do the data validations also in this phase development integration testing run all mappings in the sequence order as well as first run the source to stage mappings then run the mappings related to dimensions as well as fact tables this is very important in the integration testing so first what we do we run all the mappings in a sequence order in the first in the first run we have to uh, load from source to stage area so in the stage 2 we have to map to the dimension tables and as well as fact tables system integration testing after development phase we have to move our code to qa environment qa environment quality assurance in this environment we are giving read only permissions to testing people so in the qa environment they are have their peoples are having only read only permissions to testing so they will test all the workflows and they will test our code according to their standards in the queue in the qa environment what are the standards they are following they will do they will test all the workflows as well as they will test our code according to their standards user acceptance testing uat this test is carried out in the presence of client side technical users to verify the data migration from source to destination after that so they will go for the pre production and then they go to the production go live this is regarding our real time scenario this much process we do for executing any program and the things the involved in and the terms involved in in the uh, architecture of a real time project okay thank you please subscribe and like share the video thank you thank you very much